This after yet another senior IRS official took the fifth during a hearing just this week, yesterday. Mr. Roseman, are you currently employed by the IRS? Mr. Chairman, on the advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer any questions and invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege to remain yes. silent. Lastly, Mr. Roseman, are you prepared to answer any questions here today about your role in the IRS acquisitions and information technology products and services from Strong Castle, Inc.? Mr. Chairman, no. Uh, the Chairman now, the House Oversight Committee is with me now. Daryl Issa, welcome back here to America's Newsroom. What did you think yesterday? I mean, I, I kind of think you thought you were going to get the fifth, did you? We did suspect that. Our report came out uh, that morning that included some very revealing text and other information in which Mr. Roseman was involved. Uh, but more importantly, in the weeks and months that led up to this, we couldn't get the IRS to see that there was a there there in this investigation. Only during our investigation did the senior deputy in charge, uh, uh, Ms. Tucker, actually admit that now there was something that concerned her. Uh, and that's one of the problems that the IRS and more broadly in government is when good people do things, it's fine. Well, the, but when the, people the, do the, things wrong, they don't see it. But the allegation here is $500 million that he, he helped out a buddy and a friend, and now this is being traced back to him. And, but you just wonder, it is just one scandal after the other at this agency. Now, what's going, oh, on? There, what, what's going on there? Well, and this scandal is the IRS, but it also includes uh, failure to really have the kind of regulations that protect the American people at the Small Business Administration and at veterans. You understand, these individuals game the system by having a minor, if at all, injury turned into a 30% disability for this for Strong Castle CEO. Uh, they gamed uh, the location, uh, which is Chinatown, an area of Washington I'm sure you know. And uh, this whole process, although some of it may not be illegal, certainly shows that we need real changes inside government. This is an administration that cannot tell right from wrong or truth from false. Um, it's not just in Washington, though. I mean, the American people are feeling this, too. I mean, our polling just this week found that 55 percent, 55 percent of the people we survey um, do not believe that the president's handling of this situation regarding conservative groups is well, has been approved, or that they approve of the way he's handled that. Now, well, later, they re later in the week, now, you're going to have another chance, possibly, to bring back Lois Lerner. Do you think Lois Lerner will be back in front of your committee and will be forced to answer questions? Well, tomorrow, uh, Friday, we're going to take the first steps toward getting her back and getting her to answer questions. Ultimately, we don't want her taking the fifth. We want her answering the questions because we need to know, and especially at a time in which the administration is now spinning that somehow progressive groups were targeted. Uh, they're doing it without real support. Progressive groups are self-identifying that somehow they were hurt. It's very clear this was a target of specific conservative groups done by the IRS, not just in Cincinnati, but in Washington. Did she waive her right and her Fifth Amendment privilege when she made a statement before your committee some weeks ago? I believe so. I believe Trey Gowdy's point during the hearing and the reason that we recessed rather than adjourned was so we could have that consideration. We have opinions by learned uh, and appropriate people uh, as to the law, and we're going to consider that on Friday, which is the first step toward bringing her Th back. That would seem to suggest that she will come back. Can we conclude that? We believe she could. Uh, I believe after the committee has properly reviewed uh, the facts, I believe we're going to reach the decision that she has waived her rights and that at least in a substantial way related to the statement she already made, she needs to answer questions. I, I, I've, I'm out of time, but when would that testimony take place indeed if she comes back? Well, we'll make our decision on Friday and schedule it for immediately following or reasonably following the uh, 4th of July okay. recess, which is only a week. All right, Daryl Issa, thank you for your time. We'll watch the vote thank tomorrow. You, thank you. In